Well, I'm here with Bob Perlman, Michael Golston, and Lytle Shaw, and we're going to talk about one tender button. Bob, would you read it, and then we'll talk uh, about sure. it? Sure. I, I, let's see. I'll put my glasses on. Okay. Um, There's two. Well, we're only, we're only going to talk, talk about, about water raining. Yeah. Water raining. Water astonishing and difficult altogether makes a meadow and a stroke. Mm. Okay, Lytle, it doesn't make sense, but can you help us make some sense of it? Uh, like, I think it plays on something around an idiom. It's, it's altogether difficult, but it's also all together. The water's in some mm. way mm -hmm. uh, uh, together. It makes a meadow. I guess, I suppose it, it, um, it's a negative spot in the meadow, and the stream inside the meadow makes the meadow into something that can be seen. And a stroke is, is you could think of this poem as a stroke. It's, it's a, a short gesture, but I immediately think of Cezanne and the kind of showing, showing so the work. it's a painterly stroke in a way, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a mark making, you know, yeah. that, okay. just in the way that her sentence is a, is a, is a little attitude toward language. A, I mean, it's a great, that's a great way in. Uh, Michael, astonishing yeah. and difficult. Yeah. Those are real Steinian words because we know it is difficult and astonishing. She's just so full of herself, you know. <laughs> yeah. She's uh, telling us that this is astonishing and difficult, and it is. Um, what I get from stroke, though, are literally sort of like the strokes of the line of the rain coming down. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. more almost like an Apollinaire moment, you yeah. know, yeah. where you yeah. have things coming down on that. Um, Bob, yeah. it's a, it's very visual then, based on what Mike just said. You know, it's it, and Lytle. There's a lot of stroking going on. It's I, a poem that does paint that does uh, raining. Well, tender buttons is quite is unique in Stein's work as she doesn't actually always write this unpredictably, believe it or not. Um, I take it as um, a description of, no, I don't take it as that way. Um, the title makes us want to think it is, she's uh, dissecting rain into water and rain, which later that's what uh, Williams does in the red wheelbarrow, but the, um, uh, the raindrops hanging off the off the uh, wheelbarrow, um, but if you didn't have the last and a stroke, you could actually have this as um, a kind of lyrical ode to water. Mm -hmm. That water rains. It's astonishing um, to try to keep all of the rain in mind at once. is difficult altogether, but the end result is fecundity. It makes a meadow, and that. Makes be, as in it enables it enables it, it, a meadow it, it, to come into existence, right. and right. all of that is a, yeah. would be kind of you know romantic uh, evocation of the natural processes. But then, a, and a stroke is what is happens so often in tender buttons, where suddenly you realize that words and language are very unpredictable, especially given Stein's openness. Yeah. Um, at this point, and I I really totally buy what Lytle said about the stroke that it you know that she's she is very enthusiastic about Cezanne at this point. And mm -hmm. Cezanne has been, and she's been seeing these paintings of Cezanne where there are these little strokes that make up, um, what is it, Victoire, uh, the mountain. That mountain, yeah, yeah, yeah. That mountain. Um, and suddenly she breaks the evocation of nature and says, no, no, this is, this is a work of art. And... Uh, it shows its making. Yes, it shows its making. It's, isn't it odd that water raining? Yeah. That's it. It's <laughs> so Grenier, man. It's like a Grenier poem, you know? Uh, if rain is raining. Robert Grenier, yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I just wanted well, to. Well, you know, it's also a Grenier, there's also a reference to it's difficult to turn away from moving water. It's, there's a Linhaginian reference here, too. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Post facto. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, uh, question for uh, Lytle and Mike. Um, I, 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 we have to read difficult as um, meta-artistic or meta-poetic mm -hmm. because it's not simply that the water does something that's astonishing and difficult, but this Cezanne, trying to do Cezanne in writing yeah. is also a difficulty. Would the two of you comment on that, Lytle, first? I think it's difficult to get it all together. It's difficult to see all the different strokes uh, and all the different drops as one thing, yeah. and that is the, 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 the struggle. But it's also difficult to look at art that shows you a picture and then shows you a gesture of picturing or picture making in the way right. that Cezanne is constantly doing. Right. Mike. Yeah, and what I like here is just the um, kind of hatch, you know, I mean, Cezanne is using these hatch marks to do these things. He's like putting together things 
with these sorts of uh, literally strokes and hatches. So it's almost like you were looking at, and again, a kind of Grenier way, I'm looking at words, water, astonishing and difficult altogether makes, you know, right. where I'm actually looking at the words as much as I'm looking at the syntax on some level. Yeah. What, uh, what I find, I'm sorry to interrupt, Alan, yeah. what I find unusual about uh, this particular piece of Stein's and thinking about all the Stein I've read, you often, you don't get that kind of... Um, Astonishing seems like a, a, a ingenuous openness. Like, oh, isn't isn't the world astonishing? I, I'm astonished at my perceptions, and that is, does not seem to me very typical of Stein, who so often is in control of what she's saying and perceiving, and and a step ahead of the reader. And here, the astonishing is is more like, oh my gosh, what amazing, yeah. what an amazing thing this is, which is not an emotion. The, a gesture that you associate mm, with Stein, yeah, good. and and even difficult. She she sometimes talks about the difficulties she has in doing a certain thing, but always with the sense that she's breaking through and doing it. Whereas here, it seems like, you know, am I up for writing, capturing mm. what water mm. raining is really mm. about? So I, I have one more question, then I want to ask each of you yeah. uh, for a final thought on this. Um, the number, in the grammatical logical sense, the number of altogether is difficult. Uh, altogether is usually more than two. You would mm -hmm. never use altogether for two. You would never use it for one. <laughs> technically, good, technically, yeah. water is the one thing. Oh yeah. Water right. altogether, and of course, water is very various and multiplicitous. But it makes me think of altogether in a big way, altogether meaning in a synthetic or synthesizing yeah. way. So anyway, can, can one or two of you say something about altogether? It is quite astonishing the way she uses altogether. It might be, have to do with mass and count, you know, where you have something like, uh, there are certain nouns that have to do with mass, like water. Mm -hmm. You don't actually ever, it never, you know, turns into parts, as opposed to something like, you know, altogether might suggest that there are actually kind of units that are coming together mm. in some kind of a way where right. she's playing with that. I was also thinking of the sounds, water, astonishing, and difficult altogether makes a meadow and a stroke. So the, the numerousness the is the sound. Yeah, 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 that's good. Oh, that's, that's but there's great. also that's a kind great. of ja a Jamesian, Henry Jamesian, um, difficult altogether seems like the kind oh, of modification. You mean rhetorically, Henry yes. Yes. But actually, Sounds philosophically, like William's Jamesian. William Jamesian, but, but because it's all the, about the movement, like his analogy to the movement, stream of consciousness is actually a metaphor about streams. I hear a deformed movement. idiom of altogether dif difficult or altogether different here. Di there's some, mm, there's that, some kind of... The, that, yeah, I've just yeah. been listening to a little bit of uh, Henry James on Audible, so this kind of stuff is in my head. Well, he doesn't and have sentences quite like this, but... Difficult them, altogether is so very good, James. Very it's it's really very is. Henry Jamesian. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's uh, a difference between a meadow and a stroke, which well, seem it's like a huge really a huge, huge difference. Yeah. I mean, when meadow yeah. is so lyrical, uh, yeah. and, and, and even the sound meadow, and then stroke. Stroke, stroke could be a verb. And stroke it's is, a yeah. very modern move to go yeah. from meadow to stroke and yeah. basically create an equivalence. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. A stroke yeah. is that little atomic yeah. piece of right. the making. Right. Yeah. All right. Final thoughts all the way around. Bob Perlman. Final thought on this tender button. <laughs> uh, it's just um, she's so efficient in creating difference and uh, difficulty in evocation. How many words is this? It's uh, for. Uh, 11 words. And we've produced Plus about 13 kind of <laughs> yeah. 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 Mike, final thought? Uh, I think it's beautiful. I haven't, we haven't talked at all, I think, about just the aesthetic kind of, and the beauty of this water, astonishing and difficult altogether makes a many understood. There's a way in which I think she's evoking a certain kind of, again, partly pastoral kind of beauty. Oh, yeah. But there's something at the really end of stroke gorgeous about it. it. Yeah, exactly. So. Or it still through. makes you want to go out into the rain and get yes, wet. Yes, it does, man. Exactly. And then it's and a plein air poem. Yeah, it really nice. Is. But, but not to have a stroke. For all these, <laughs> not to have for a, all its not economy, economy and it's only being eleven words. Yeah. It has a redundancy in the title, which is also really funny. 
I like funny about considering how water, concise it water, is. water, water raining. is raining. Yeah. Water raining yeah. is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I don't. Final thought. That's it. That's, That's that, it. All right. My final thought is: I keep whenever, whenever I encounter this thing, I keep thinking of the funny English axiomatic grammar of "it is raining." The yes, it exactly. Of raining. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And takes it back to Grenier. No, it's not it. It's uh-huh. not raining. Water sure. is raining. Yeah. You know? She's yeah. sort of setting the English language rain straight is... idiomatically and axiomatically. Well, raining as a, as a gerund is a very odd... You know, right. So it's it. A, it modifies it, a yeah. funny, funny ING verb that's modifying what water is doing. Well, right. what else would water do? I guess it's sit flow. there. Oh, it can, it can, it can freeze. Well, 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 it can yeah, right, come gas. Okay, man. All right. You know, we <laughs> but like, have water raining. Let's look at water raining. Well, what else can rain? Exactly. Well, we didn't Even say the most uh, the most important obvious yeah. thing about this. We just lived with this too long. We forgot, you know, formlessness or you know, form is challenged by water. Water will find its yeah. own way. Water yeah, yeah, is yeah. the one thing that poets have discovered. One of the few things, along with the imagination, that will go whatever will take whatever form. Yeah, it possibly will. Fills and why yeah. wouldn't Gertrude Stein be fascinated by something, an actual thing that's out there in the world physically? Right. You know, that actually will do whatever form it wants to do, mm-hmm. defying any kind of set geometry. Mm-hmm. Except she only... I knew he was going to start. <laughs> go ahead, go we need to go anyway. around one more time. Okay, go ahead. Except that she doesn't do this very often. In fact, does she do, do this ever again? Does she ever write about water this way? She's not. Probably not. We've got to do some study. But it's now. really <laughs> nice to see this in, yes, in Tender is. Buttons. Oh, yeah. And, you know... When, when she says in the very first piece, the difference is awesome. spreading, yeah. this is one way Ooh, in which difference nice. spreads, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, water really flows. It yeah. flows. Yeah. And I think Emily Dickinson was kind of obsessed with water as a metaphor. Yeah. And one thing about water raining is that it doesn't have a form. It's actually the, it just takes up the entire atmosphere, you know? Yeah. It doesn't come into anything. All right, Lyle, we all have had added extra Just final it's a, thoughts. It's your turn. It's a meta pastoral interlude. Oh. And that is the final word. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Bob, Mike, Lyle. This was great. Thank, Thank you, you Al. That was fabulous. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org. <laughs>